So, I, I want to start our discussion today. I just want to um, ask you to just tell us about yourself. Who is uh, Robert? Oh, thank you. Um, like you, like you rightly said. Um, first of all, this is African legends. I don't think I'm a legend yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, let me tell you something about legends. Uh -huh. Most of the times, you know, they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, thank you very much. I'm a Malawian, like you introduced, uh, like you properly introduced. Um, I must boldly say that I'm a Christian. Uh, uh, practicing one very you know much in love with the Lord Jesus and very serious with my faith um, for the past 30 years or so I've been working in the water sector um, after my initial training as a as a, as a civil engineer um, in, in here uh, back home in Malawi uh, I've trained I've worked in the water sector various um, organizations from government to parastatals to NGOs to um, uh, international organization projects, you know, the mostly the, the entire spectra. Actually, when I actually as I reflect back, I'm like, wow, okay, that's mm. been quite, you know, and in several countries on the continent, mostly in Africa. Yeah. Trained in, in in Malawi, trained um, in, in in the UK, trained in the US at various levels of education. So. Um, that is who I am. I'm very passionate professionally um, about um, helping to change the fortunes of the urban poor. Yeah. You know, the people who live in the peri-urban areas. You know, that, that is where my passion gets triggered, you know, to see their lives improved so that if anything I'm doing, you know, has a way of impacting their lives, I, I sleep well. And That's obviously, right. the Christian, um, I, I'm also into ministry when I get the chance, you know, encouraging, leading people. Uh, towards Christ and helping people to improve their Christian walk. So in summary, mm -hmm. that's who I am. I'm married um, with three children. Yeah. Married to one wife. Yes. You know, <laughs> with, with three children. Okay. Uh, did you did you move with your 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 fa your whole family is in Nigeria right now, right? Um, no, actually, I'm I'm here with my wife and our last born. Okay. Uh, because the other two guys are slightly older now, and they're all one of our, our first born is a lawyer. She's practicing in Blanta, Malawi. Mm -hmm. Our second born is um, is a sportsman. He's actually in at a soccer academy in Spain. You know, pursuing soccer and you know doing trials and those, yeah. all those kind of that football people do. So, yeah. Uh, but the youngest guy is with us because he's still in high school. Okay. Yeah. So uh, to to just uh, so we are we are hanging out with um robert hanja hanja today one of our african legends uh someone that um i met uh, personally a couple of years ago about three four years ago uh when i was visiting malawi and uh uh just a few minutes of having a chat and uh discussing what he does you know i realized that he is somebody who is uh doing a lot for our continent and uh so I felt that he should be part of this uh, discussion today. What does a water engineer do, uh, or you as an engineer, what do you do in the water uh, sector? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I trained as a civil engineer. I initially worked as a water engineer, but I kind of um, moved on from that uh, in terms of you know my profession because I'm more of like an advisor or a specialist um, in, in, in certain aspects of, of, of water service delivery. Mm. Um, so I, I, I always tell my children, I haven't done any engineering work, you know, hardcore engineering, perhaps in over 20 years. Wow. You know, because engineering, water engineering really is about designing, you know, the facilities that um, deliver water from a, a dam like you're talking about, it's starting from designing the dam, you know the the pipe work that is required to deliver that water right to the you know the the the, the taps and the metering and all those kind of things the the pressure you know levels the the, the network intricacies all those things um, constitute the work of a water engineer you're supposed mm -hmm. to be able to design these and you're supposed to be able to supervise the construction of you know those facilities okay you know, in response to whatever design has been put together so that that is the role of a water engineer. Um, and um, 
that that is what they do they they just facilitate the design the conceptualization you know of complex you know systems uh, and get them on the ground and make sure that people are receiving the water that they need and they and they require i okay. i i like i said i've done that but i i kind of moved on you know, to more of an advisor and a specialist you know more like um managing now a yes. group of engineers and you know managing projects and and at, at that level and so on Managing just just for interest, for interest sake, uh, just a small digression out of this con uh, conversation. How sure. did you guys build a dam like that on top of a mountain? Okay, so uh, disclaimer that okay that I was in the sector when it was built, but I wasn't directly you know involved in the construction. But I mean, it, it, it the first of, first of all, there's a river coming from the mountain coming down. Okay, and, and, and water distribution is all about pressure, right? When, mm -hmm. you, when you can open your, your water tap, you want, there's a certain amount of pressure that should come out, you know, for you to feel that there's water in the house or on your shower or whatever. So the higher the source, you know, you have, the, the better the pressure is. Now, for, in most um, water systems all over the world, even in your home country, you, you have to pump water up to a small hill uh -huh. And then it comes back down by gravity to 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 create that pressure. For 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 the dam in Zomba, Mulunguzi Dam, you know, it was an it was a no-brainer. There, there's the water. It's coming from a river. It's on a plateau. You can easily dam, you know, that place as you saw. And and once you have that, you know, it's just a matter of managing how much water is going down, uh, controlling the pressures, which is an engineer's delight, you know, in, yeah. in terms of planning that, and then distributing. So the city of Zomba. The whole city water is distributed without any pumping. No pumping whatsoever. Wow. It just flows, you know, That's from... That's a from, big gift, eh? Yeah, it is. I mean, all other cities in the country, you know, they, we have to pump to small little hills and then distribute back by gravity. But here we already have a gravity-fed system given to us by nature, by God. Okay. So now, we, water is such an integral part of uh, any form of development, uh, Robert. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I read somewhere or I um, heard someone say that um, the fourth, is it the third world war is going to be fought over water. Mm -hmm. So why is water such an important part of development? I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, the, 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 the exciting thing is that water is the key element that we have in, in terms of development. Without water, you can do absolutely nothing. You know, you, you couldn't survive as a human being, you know, without consuming uh, certain amounts of water per day, you know, over a certain period of time. You mm -hmm. need water, you know, for sanitation, to make yourself clean, to make your environment clean. You need water um, to prepare food. You need water for, for almost every aspect of life. You know, you have to factor in water. So water is a key element. And that's why it is such um, um, a, a key thing when it comes to development, the development agenda of any nation. Tragically. Mm -hmm. In this continent, you know, water has been heavily politicized. Okay. You know, so in, instead of it being seen as a very useful commodity, it becomes a political commodity. So, I mean, in every political campaign that comes, people say, I'm bringing you water, I'm bringing you this, I'm doing that. <laughs> you know? and, and then the, there's the, the, bis, the big um, misnomer or misunderstanding that, okay, well, I'm giving you water, but it's going to be free because it came from God, which yeah. is true. You know, water is, is free because it's a commodity given to us, you know, by God. But bring it to your house, bring it to at a quality, you know, that you can consume without falling sick. There's somebody who's treated the water. There's somebody who's transported the water. Mm -hmm. uh, that, there is a cost, and that is the cost that, you know, is normally attached to water. So water is, is critical. And they, I've heard that, that the next war will be about water because even though over 70% of the earth is covered by water, yeah, only only five to six percent of the 30 percent that remains is actually actually consumable water you wow. know it makes it a very scarce commodity as it is you know wow. it is a fair but it, the the quality that humans need is very scarce you know and that's why we have a lot of issues around you know especially when you have riv rivers that cross borders and yes. you know there are always issues you know as to how how do we handle this you know who, who owns the rice are they allowed to put a dam upstream and so on and the Water is very critical. Wow. Now, now as an African, mm -hmm. uh, wh why do you think we are still underdeveloped when we have such huge freshwater sources? And, uh, you know, you know, in our country, 
we have maybe about four uh, huge rivers. You know, we have the Zambezi River, one of the biggest in Africa. We have the Kafue River. You know, it's huge as well. We have the Luangwa River and we have a couple of uh, fresh water lakes as well. Hmm. I know in Malawi, you have the Shire River and, Which the, uh, Zambezi. and, and the Zambezi passes there as well. And then you also have the, a fresh water lake. But when you look at um, uh, the development, if, if water is such an, an, an important or integral part of our development, why do you think we haven't developed uh, when we have such huge uh, sources of water? So uh, first of all, Zambezi does not pass through Malawi. The Shira River feeds water into the Zambezi. Okay, uh, all right. So that, that's, that's the connection. Um, again, water is amazingly available, okay? But I think your question is why, why, why is the delivery of water so underdeveloped, mm. you know? And, 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 and it, it goes back to our colonial days, you know, with, with all due respect to um, what, was, um, what our colonial uh, uh, colleagues did, you know, they, they invested, they, they, they put in networks, they put in, you know, treatment facilities, they put in uh, dams and whatever they could have done, you know, right up into the 60s when we were slowly taking over these countries. Um, the problem w being that because when water is delivered properly, nobody actually notices that there are water boards or, or water companies that are actually doing the, pro because if water is available, there, there, there is no reason to discuss or debate. Because of that, you know, because we had inherited um, systems that were designed to cater for, for, for these countries up to the 60s, early 70s, mm -hmm. there was very little you know, investment or, or, or emphasis on emphasizing on, on these particular you know, uh, facilities that we had during these critical times. And um, obviously, because of you know uh, uh, countries grow in terms of numbers and the cities, as as we became you know independent, people wanted to rush into the cities and be a part of of the economic movement and growth that that existed. Um, there was not a matching you know emphasis on developing the facilities, growing okay. them so that as they grow, they grow. One, okay. two, the the replacement strategy was not there. So. Um, pipe networks exist on the ground in this continent, which were laid in the 30s, in the wow. 40s, in the 50s. You know, and, and I mean, that by, by any standards, that is very old. So we didn't have these um, deliberate pipe replacement programs. The treatment plants are the same plants that, you know, more or less, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 ex I'm, I'm cre creating brackets here, but more or less what we had in, in, in the 50s, in the 60s, the very little investment was, was done. As a result, when the city started to grow, people started to, you know, move in, these old pipes start to break down. The treatment facilities start to break down. Um, areas are, are, are developed where there is no water and then the water board has to stretch or wow. the water company has to stretch itself to, 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 to meet the demand of this new area. Meanwhile, the treatment plant that exists is only capable of, of supplying um, um, what, Just a what small it, area. So now you're, you're talking multi-million investments that need to come in. Meanwhile, because there was no priority in, the, in, in developing the water sector, you're finding now that um, um, we're having to borrow money from, from, the, from, from the lending agencies and they come in with their own conditions, their own terms. They have their own um, things that they're also experimenting on. They'll say, okay, if, you, if we're going to invest in water, we want you to try this model or that model, which because it's their money, that's what they can do. Yeah. You know, and as a, a result, as a result of that, the water sector and in some ways the energy sector started to lag behind but since we're talking about water today let's talk about that and wow. you know everything was outgrown so now instead of new new developments with new treatment facilities and all that it became a maintenance operation or oh, the the pipe break down here let's fix it the pipe break down there let's fix it this treatment plant isn't working let's work on it so it's been a maintenance and a catch-up program as opposed to oh. a development drive so 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 it means that what you're saying uh robert is that um, as the cities have been growing in Africa, most of what was done is um, was done very early in the 30s and 40s. It and the, co the population in those times in the city was very, very small because most of the people were still living in the villages. 
And when people started to move into the cities, there wasn't a vision to increase these water uh, facilities to, to meet the demand of the people that came into, into the cities. I think we are seeing this problem uh, in a lot of other areas, like even electricity, I think, you know, and uh, many, many other services. Don't you think then that it is a problem of us Africans, we don't have a vision for our people to move with the times that we are in and we depend so much on what was done for us. Am I correct to say that? You are to a certain extent correct. Um, I, I find that to be a problem that um, uh, we inherited, not from our forefathers, but from our fathers, you know, with all due mm. respect, you know. When these countries were taken, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of Pan-Africa discussion, a lot of, you know, we've got what we wanted, you know, but there was very little foresight as into, okay, but how does um, Malawi look like in 2020? Oh, yeah. That's now in 1960. What, yes. That wasn't there. What does um, um, Zambia look like? What does Kenya look like? How do these countries, you know, look like? It was all about, let's, you know, now that we have the power, and then, you know, any kind of power corrupts and it corrupts very quickly. So people mm. were excited with that. And, and if you remember the history in all these countries, it became a lot about consolidation because everyone was like, oh, if, if, if I don't consolidate what I have, these guys will also take over from me. So yeah. we started to focus on politics a little bit more than we were supposed to focus on development. development. Wow. That's what I, you know, but the conversation is changing now, you know, in, in, in these countries. You hear it a lot now that people are saying, you know what? enough of you know the political rhetoric let's let's focus on development you know you guys yeah. are in power you guys are, are, are achieving this and well done but now how can you make the livelihoods of the people of our country better mm, better yeah but now focusing um on, on on the future on on improving as opposed to just consolidating power so i think there's a very different narrative now you know i i, I speak for my country at least i can say that i can see that there's yeah. a big you know that you know the current leadership is really focused on and that's people. that's why that's why you know me and uh, my friends you know we started this uh, uh african ubuntu response as you can see the name at the end it has response it because wants, yeah. you know there is that proverb you know which says that unless you know the the lion learns how to write you know the they will always glorify the hunter you know, okay. so I think us as Africans, you know, we need to get to a place where we we need to have vision for our own continent. And um, I think we need to have a collective vision of the continent, even if we are different countries, because our countries, you know, they interrelate in many, many ways. And um, to see, for example, when you fly into an African country and... Uh, you see some of our airports you know you know you just you just land into a country and you're coming out of somewhere you are like oh this is an international uh, airport and it looks the the terminal building you know <laughs> looks smaller than some of the houses that i see in my neighborhood and they tell you that this is an international uh, airport, airport. Yeah. you know and 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 now what is happening is that um like you are saying, there's a totally different uh, narrative about Africans wanting to do things for themselves. Yes. But what is happening is that other people are coming in in droves, wanting to, again, you know, colonize the whole thing that is happening. Um, yourself, looking at what is happening to our continent right now, you know, the poverty, the lack of visionary leadership, what do you think as Africans we can do to change the course of our continent? Just uh, looking at that small context that I gave, you know, that the narrative is changing, but there are other people that have seen that this thing is moving, but we have to get on it. But it looks like it's again starting to exclude a lot of Africans. What do you think we can do to get on board as well? Ken, the first thing, the fact that in 2021 you still see other people other groupings wanting to come to africa and to participate in the conversation of of 
of extraction of wealth, if I may put it that way, you know, from other lands, that will tell you that there is something good about this continent to start with. You know, and that's where we should start from. You know, the the narrative out there is that Africa is poor, wars are raging, and what have you. Mm. You know, we were offline before this, and you know, we're talking about how the depiction of this continent is very different from the realities on the ground. You know, yeah. when, when you start to interrogate and explore things a little bit better. Having said that, the context, I want to start from the context you, you raised about, you know, um, the opportunity for countries to synergize. If you look, for example, your country, Zambia, and my country, Malawi, I mean, you've been to Malawi, I've been to Zambia. Mm. The people are literally the very same people. Exactly. We speak the same that, language. It's, it's just that you murdered our language, but yeah. you, you, you gave it a <laughs> we gave it a crazy accent. But we speak the same language, we, we eat the same food, yes. we have the same names. I, people from Malawi have origins in Zambia and people from Zambia. And this is true right across the continent. You know, the, the boundaries that we received, you know, from a, a 18, whatever it was, you know, those boundaries are very arbitrary. You know, mm. they, 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 they were created to divide us, but they, were, they, they cut right in, in the middle of villages and, and people groupings. We need to continue this idea of, you know, having these economic blocks like SADAC, yes. you know, where we work together. And it's not just, you know, uh, for show or just a stunt, but we're, we're actually now allowing economic sharing, um, allowing people to, 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 to move across comfortably, um, uh, allowing the wealth to be shared as our people start to, to, to move from poverty to, to, to higher levels of, of, of living. That, that is the first thing. You know, there should be an opportunity for, for us to work together. Secondly, I think we really need to start looking within ourselves. There is yeah. so much potential, you know, that we have up in our, in, our, in our brains, you know, within the resources that we have. I mean, this continent is rich. We, 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 we sustain the whole world based on, you know, uh, yes. you know just the mines in, in, the, in, in the Congo area, you know, in terms of the, all the technology that is there, let alone the, the gold, the, the, the oil and all the other special yeah. metals that we have. We, if we started looking inward and, and started holding hands, you know, and, uh, and saying, look, let's unite to improve what we have. This, this continent can, can, can rise very quickly. And it starts with the individual. You yeah. know, these kind of conversations that we're having here. Yes. Um, you, you're saying, well, let, let's, let's, let's interrogate this a little bit more. What can be done, you know, to improve the livelihoods of our people? It's, it, you know, life is best lived when it's lived for others. You know, that's mm. what I you know, the faith that I have, which I think I share with you, is all about that, living for others. Once you, yes. you live for others, you know, our God re releases the right kind of resources so that your livelihood improves and the people that you're trying to serve. Mm. So those are some of the, the concepts that I think would help us, you know, to start to extend what we have to, to make a difference in the lives of those who are disadvantaged. So and what, as we, what, one, as of, we one of the biggest things then what you are saying, uh, sorry to cut you short, Robert. Okay. No is problem. that Africans must unite. Yes. Yes. And it, sh it shouldn't have taken a Jamaican 30 years ago to sing a song, Africa Unite. Mm. You know, we should have known that without being told, you know, by, by Bob Marley um, back in the early 80s. We should unite. We should really hold hands and make a difference in this continent. Wow. Yeah, because because I can tell you, uh, at that time when I, when I, when I visited your country, I, I have visited, I think that was my fourth time visiting Malawi. All right. And um, because my mother stays in a small town called uh, Chipata, they are just next to the Malawi border. Mm -hmm. So what it is, is that uh, my mother and some of the people that I was interacting with in Malawi, they don't, they don't look different. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was just seeing my mother, you know, I was like, this is just like, my mother there's no difference here but but i feel i am in another country why should i feel that way that i'm means. sure that uh uh it's the same way you know i i went to a small village here in south africa when i was doing some work uh just after the about 120 kilometers away from a, 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 a city called mafikeng mm -hmm. and in this village they showed me, you know, uh, that you see that side of the village is Botswana. This side of the village is South Africa. Can Actually, people move around within that village 
and uh, they have two cell phones. I mean, uh, they they have two networks. He can buy from Botswana or he can buy Vodacom from South Africa. These are same people. A, a, a guy in the same family has a house on the Botswana side. His cousin stays on the South African side. I mean, it's madness. Uh, but uh, it's 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 one of those things that you are saying that uh, the borders were created for us, and then we start to feel like we are different people. Now, as someone who has worked uh, extensively on the continent, uh, um, Robert, um, mm -hmm. what do you think is the missing link? Uh, from uh, obviously you've spoken about the the unity, but don't you think there is also something? to do with the psyche of an African that is a stumbling block to development? At a mental level, what do you think? Oh my God, that, 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 is, that is at the heart of everything. Um, first of all, uh, poverty is not a state of having and having not. Mm -hmm. Poverty is a state of the mind. Wow. Uh, it is. If, 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 I mean, You've been around long enough, Ken. You've seen people who are multi-millionaires, you know. But when you meet them on the street, you'd think that he's a pauper. He's somebody who's a who's a beggar. They, mm -hmm. they, they, the mannerism, the, the the what they choose to wear, how they conduct themselves. Oh, this guy, surely with all this money he has, he should be, you know. And then you've seen people who have very little, you know, but are very much at peace with themselves, and you know they they are very decent, and you know they live a very good life, very healthy. And, and that tells you that poverty is not defined by what you do or do not have. It's defined mm -hmm. by, by, by the state of mind. So you're talking about the African psyche. That, that is the key thing. You know, what, you know, what do we think and believe in our heads? And unfortunately, because of 100 years plus of, of colonial history, mm -hmm. you know, we have to believe that anything that the Mzungu yes. you know, says... Anything that the Mzungu has written, yeah. anything that Mzungu, you know, argues for is, is the truth, yeah. you know? And, and whereas the, the, the Mzungu, God bless their souls, it was all, you know, economic, you know, manipulation, trying to, to, to take advantage of, of what they've seen. So how do, we, how do we penetrate? Let's create this image where we think and we, we portray ourselves as superior. Yeah, you know, um, to, to, uh, and, and and we bought that wholesale, you know, hook, line, and sinker. We, and sinker, we believe, yes. We believe that you know anything beyond Africa is 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 better. Is better. So you you'll find that um, what is um, a local chicken, for example, if I, I can use a very ordinary example, we would call it in my language um, an, an African chicken. Yeah. You know, and then these um, hybrid ones. You know, which are actually hybrided in Africa. They're not hybrided anywhere. They're hybrided in Africa by Africans. We yeah. call them um, yajizu. Yajizu, yeah. Yajizu. I mean, and that is ridiculous. You know, if, if somebody, you know, does something good, you call her, oh, this is mzunguatu. Yes, you know? yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's those kind of mindsets. Where yeah. we put ourselves down, you know, which, which create the opportunity for others to take advantage of us. Yes. No, if, it's... If it's it's if true. I had the chance, I would, I would even go into religion and prove to you that even, you know, the whole um, concept of Christianity was whitewashed. We're, we're made to believe that Jesus was white. He was not. Yeah. You know, he was as dark as you and me, or even slightly, you know. But that's yeah. a conversation for another day. I'm not going to yes, that. Yes. And, and the whole <laughs> Jewish community was not white. It's impossible. If you just a simple study of history and geography, will tell you these guys. Can't. But we believe that he was white. Therefore, you know the white people are superior so that that is the problem and because of that you know we 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 believe that anything beyond uh, so when we start to develop ourselves you know we 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 are suspicious how can this yeah. guy how can ken be so advanced he must yes. have yes magic or he must be you know consulting the local sangoma yes. or whatever he, he can't do it on himself he must yeah. his hand must be held by some white guy somewhere you yeah. know it, it, it's never about him so we don't trust him. If there's two shops on the street which sell, which are supermarkets, people will rush to the. Yeah. Will not rush to your supermarket, Ken. They'll rush yeah. to the foreigners yeah. yes. because oh, he must have superior quality. Yeah. For, you but, know, you know, I watched, 
I watched something amazing a couple of uh, days ago. There's a guy here. I think I will. I want to get him on uh, African Legends one of these fine days if I can pull it off. His name is Busi Tebekwayo. He said something okay. so powerful because he said, "Look, South Africa, for example, has been out of apartheid for the past 27 years. Mm -hmm. Which supermarket chain can you say was built by an African?" You know, you know, our children, you know, many times we cry about uh, racism in the schools where we are taking them to because the white teachers mistreat them, you know, and we cry. But we have a lot of African people that have so much money that they have amassed from, uh, obviously, some of them it's corruption. But no one is thinking about building schools, you know, where we can take our kids and, and make these schools really good, you know. Now that is what i see you know as a as a problem robert we don't know how to build things we don't know mm -hmm. how to have a long view you know or 25 years 30 years like you were saying in 1960 our presidents you know should have sat down what type of africa do we see in in in, in 2020 you know what type of african do you do we want to produce but we are not doing uh, those things, you know. So it is uh, it is quite uh, a difficult uh, a difficult one. So if I were to say to you, Robert, as an African man, uh, uh, you wake up in the morning, and all of us Africans we say, Mr. Hanja Hanja, we want you to be our president for the African continent. What <laughs> dream? <laughs> what dream? do you have about <laughs> africa what what uh what what africa do you see in your head okay so first of all let's remove the the president element um i think there are others people who can do that ably well and they are doing it very well yeah um what do i dream i i i, I dream of a very very vibrant africa i mean and i don't see um, it being too far from reality, if we can, if we can put our acts together, I, I mm. see an Africa where you know, we have kind of given um, the political drive a back seat um, um, and put in the forefront uh, the development drive. You know where we are taking the resources we have and making a difference um, in in our countries. Mm. Our countries are small and are very easy to develop. My country, Malawi, is, is minuscule. You know, the amount of road network that we require, for example, you know, in kilometers is is is, is almost small. like half of a in the in the in the US or yeah. one small country in Europe. The amount of energy that we require, amount of water to get people, and we have all the resources for these things right in the country. Yes. So you know in order country to be developed i mean it's it's security it's food security it's access to access which is roads it's um it's um health which is the hospitals um it's, it's these basic things that we we always hear uh, about and try to push and once we look inward and and start to develop these across the continent and and and, and, and continent share i mean there's no reason why some great invention should come from um from from south africa and nobody else in the in the region knows about it you know the information yeah. should be shared and, 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 you know, don't reinvent the world. Guys, this is the way we did it. I mean, we all mm. look to Rwanda as a model of how a country should. So let's learn from them. What have they done right? You know, yeah. and, and extract information from there and, and replicate it in our, in our cities, in our towns, in our villages. You know, pretty soon, you know, there'll be very little difference between a, a, a small town and a village in rural Malawi uh, yeah. and, and, the, and a small town and the main cities in, in, in 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 our in our countries, and once that is achieved, we can say that Malawi has started to move forward. And so it's the yeah. basics: you know, give people dignity. You know, people shouldn't shouldn't have to walk kilometers. I was reading an article this morning of a, of a lady who at two a.m. you know was at a health center in one of our countries yes. and trying to get help. You know, for I think malaria or something, and and they were di directed to the referral hospital, which was about 15, 20 kilometers away. And this lady had to walk, you know, oh, at no. two a.m. 
some guy who was also coming from the same hospital on his car stopped and said, lady, this is twin. Where, where are you going? And she explains that, oh, I, I, I was at this clinic and I've been referred. The clinic couldn't access an ambulance. Oh, so this no. guy now started and there was one or two other people. You know, that shouldn't be the case. I mean, people shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the case at, in 2021. I'm sorry, no. it just shouldn't be the case. No, you know, no. And these are just the basics, getting from one point to another. You know, mm. what's the transport system like? What, what are the, I mean, surely malaria can be dealt with in a, in a health center in Africa yeah. in 2021. You should yes. have to be referred, you know, and so on. So it's, it's that kind of mentality where people are thinking about how can I improve you know, the, what what influences I have, and then taking on to the next level. If we can change our minds, and, and, and the other thing, Ken, is that we Africans are very lazy when it comes to ac- acquiring knowledge. Ah. You know, we've all been told that um, if you want to hide something from someone, put it in a book. Oh, yeah. You know, an African, if you put it in the book, they'll never, ever never read it, it, yeah. But I mean, the information is so available now on the internet, what have you. You know, if you just dedicated an hour, half an hour a day just to absorb and acquire, you know, mm-hmm. your mind starts to change. You start to learn. You know, it's not enough just to read novels and, you know, and stuff like that, but stuff that challenges you, that changes your thinking. If we did that as Africans collectively, you know, uh, got our mindset correct and started, you know, to move and drive towards development, this continent yeah. can change. And also, like I said earlier, working across the countries as, as opposed yeah. to in isolation. Yes. Uh, so the, getting the right kind of knowledge as well. You see where the other thing is, uh, Robert? When, when, when I look at the kind of knowledge that has been uh, put out there, it's, it's something that we can use to develop our continent. But what I have also realized is that, look, I have written five books myself, you know, and okay. um, um, I know that some of the people that are very close reader. sorry it means you are a person who reads you can't you write see, if you don't but, read but but what yeah. you are saying is so true because some of the people that know me very well they have never read my book and they don't know what is in my books <laughs> if 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 that book was written by another guy from another country you know and just just putting another title and another name they would, they would uh, go to there. So I think as well that us as Africans, we need to know what we need to write in these books because some of the books, like you were saying earlier, has information that is perpetuating the inferiority complex in a lot of us and also the superiority complex in a lot of other people as well. You know, uh, like you are saying, you know, if you went to a church today uh, in a Sunday school class, the, a, a black church, maybe in the township in South Africa or a compound in Malawi, you will mm-hmm. never see, you know, in the book that they are reading for the kids, a black child in those uh, pictures. The, sure. the little people pictures are white kids the little uh, Jesus is a white Jesus. And, and so if a person starts to pick up those things, starting from a very young age, that us, we have been excluded from, uh, even from the story of God, you know? And so how do you think we can change that? You know, how can we change uh, an African to start to learn from other Africans? You know, uh, great Africans like Aliko Dangote, that has created a huge company uh, and employs uh, hundreds of thousands of people. You know, here in South Africa, Mr. Mtepe, you know, he has a huge uh, mining uh, conglomerate. You know, how can we do that, like Busi was saying the other day, to build these things so that someone can look and say, that is Hanja Hanja supermarket. And Hanja Hanja is like me. You know, don't you yeah. think that if we see these things done by Africans, it would change our sight? I think you're, what you're touching on um, is uh, role models, right? Yes. You know, that role models need to come out. And, and uh, first of all, come out so that we can see them. Um, the Dangotes of this world um, um, and all these great, you know, sons of the soil who have achieved so much. 
and and secondly um, in order for them to come out i mean just seeing them on the in the newspaper or or on tv doesn't do much but a narrative of how they achieved what they achieved you know mm-hmm. so their biographies um their lessons in life you know all captured in books or magazines or 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 youtube discussions or discussions like we're having here yeah. you know so that people can start to hear okay how, how did this guy do it because this this gentleman's you know story is the same as mine he comes yes. from a village he had these struggles he he, 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 I'm just rand, rambling examples. His father died early, or this happened to him. You know, he was kicked out of school. But look at him now, and uh, now he runs a chain of supermarkets. Now he has a big cement company. How did he do it? So mm. once people have access to that information, that first of all, let's share the information. Once they have, you know, it, it motivates. It's like if he did that, I can do that as well. You know, because I, I, I've got the same, you know, two hands, the same brains, yes. the same everything that god gave him god also gave me you yes. know so you know that that's that's the mindset change we're talking about you know getting our people to be challenged to say no i, I can do that and 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 can let's be positive here if you if you listen carefully to the narrative especially mm. uh, some of the younger guys you know in respect to our age level you find yes. that this is current the current conversation people are changing you yeah. know people are saying no wait a minute i don't have to live a, a, a second rate life I, I i can change i can i can do things i can i can read i can you know i can invest i can you know diversify i can make a difference in the continent i can do it cleanly without going down the path of corruption yes. you know i can be a man of faith you know where people depend on when i'm dependable i'm i'm, I'm a, a, a role model in my in my community i can be um, a, a chief without you know uh, interests in without com- combining you know sorcery witchcraft and so on i i can yes. there is a conversation out there which is i can and i think yes. that that is something we encourage you know yeah. um and, and make sure that it filters all across mm. once that happens i'm telling you once people know you know that this is how ken wrote his five books this is how uh, robert became uh, a water expert in, in the yes. continent this is how this happened this is how this person became that you know people get motivated and then they define their own stories and move on yes yeah that that, so that is don't have to that share. is so that is so so true robert you know because when i was growing up as well what you just touched now is the narrative that we were told you know when i grew up in the village any person who had money it's because he killed the, his mother or or maybe he put he put his father in the grinding mill you know yeah and and uh, there, I, there was no one who who had a business that mm. survived and grew and became something powerful without having to be part of a witchcraft that's the psyche that is in an african uh uh, uh person you know uh, an average african think that um, wealth and prosperity cannot be created by uh, genuine effort, you know, without yeah. having to involve some mystical kind of... Uh, h- how do we get that? Because I am seeing that now creeping into the church, you know? Even us as Christians, if you've noticed, there's a lot of people especially myself as a pastor that come to me and they want to be prayed for but even when a person is lazy he thinks that my prayer would help them to become rich because in their sight wealth is mystical it's not something that you create how can we move away from that uh, way of thinking <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my God, my my late pastor, <laughs> one of my late pastors, used to used to say that he used to share a story where you know he was praying and fasting, you know, for somebody you know, who had an issue and come to the pastor. Can you be the mystical one and pray? You yeah. Know, and 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 then fast. So he was in town buying groceries, whatever. And then he sees this guy at um, at a fast food outlet, you know, eating chicken and what have you, <laughs> chips and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you, I'm here fasting and sweating for you, <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah. you, 
enjoying your cook. What's going on? You know, this guy had stories. And then, and the pastor said, you know, I, I, I'm not fasting for you again. This is it done. And give me some of your chicken. Let's eat yes. together. Yes. You know, and, and he would say that when he was teaching about the very things you're, you're raising now, that, you know, pastors are not, you know, modern day magicians. You yeah. know, the church is not a, a modern day household for, 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 for magical solutions. You know, mm. uh, pastors, ministers of the gospel are there to show you Christ, to show you the way to God, to teach you the ways of God, you know, to expose you to, to, to your theological thinking, uh, to help you become a better and stronger Christian. You know, but they're, they're not, they don't have a magic button. Uh, and Africans, we love the magic button. You know, everyone wants to have a little thing in their pocket. They want, you know, if I come to you, Pastor Ken, and you don't give me a handkerchief or some water in a bottle, you're yeah, used this pastor, in yeah. my view. I'm like, this guy, he's got no power. I'd rather go to that pastor because when I go there, he'll sell me, you know, some water or whatever, mm. and I can use that as a point of contact. You know, that, that, that is, it goes back to our ori- origins, you know, where we, we say nothing can happen without a point of contact. But, but yeah. you know, the essence of Christianity, Christ said, look, I've torn the veil. I've, I've removed that cloud of mystery and on your behalf so that you guys can have direct access to God. All you need to do is to say, God, here I am. I'm coming here in the name of Jesus. This is what I want. You know, this is what I need. Can you intervene in my life? And God is so happy to do yeah. so because the, read Hebrews chapter 1 and chapter 2. It, it elaborates on that. The, the, the veil has been torn and you have direct access to him. And that, and that is the thinking that is missing. People think that in order to, to, to achieve, you, you need, you know, God can't do it alone. He needs some intermediary. You know, um, one of my um, um, elderly relatives um, yes. in the category of aunt, uncle, you know, always says, you know, when, when I'm preaching or talking about Christ, no, 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 don't do that. Don't, you know, those people are too powerful. And I'm like, no, you know, there is no power that is superior to the power of God. Yes. You know, God, yes. the creator of everything. I mean, he, he, you, you can, your mind can't even start to fathom how big or how vast he is. So, you know, there is no comparison. It's like comparing um, an ant, you know, to a man, you know, there, there's no comparison. Yeah. You know, trying to explain God to a man is like explaining uh, uh, the internet to an ant. It's, mm. it's impossible. Therefore, you know, with a God set mentality, you know, you don't need these intermediaries. These are these are hoaxes. Even in the church, these are hoaxes. They're not true. Yeah. There's no, yeah. There is no pastor who, you know, who can be an intermediary between you and God. You have direct access. His role is to teach. Yes. You know, that's why the pastors and teachers. If yes. you read the Bible, they didn't say pastors. They said some are past prophets, some are evangelists, some are apostles, and then pastors and teachers. Because yes. pastors teach, you know, the, the scripture, not to, to be intermediaries. The intermediary role when Christ died on the cross. And yeah, the because I think I think a pastor has just replaced a sangoma these days. And that's because, the sad tragedy. Yeah, because yeah. because we used to go to sangomas to get uh, multi for wealth. Yeah. Now yeah. we want to just go to the pastor to go and get the bottle where we no. sprinkle the office every day, you know, and no. uh, then we are going to get more customers, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really... Um, these conversations that we are having here on uh, African legends, you know, uh, Robert, it, 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 it's something that has been on my heart for a very long time to just have these conversations with people. And I pray that our audience is going to just grow, you know, and uh, cover the whole of our continent because uh, uh, wisdom, like your wisdom that you bring out today, it needs to be, you know, uh, needs to reach uh, Africans. It needs to reach our people, for our people to understand that, uh, like you were saying, we need to look inside ourselves, both in the continent, but also inside ourselves as Africans, to also know that we are capable, just like other people, other God's people, that um, are doing great things out there. You know, so... Uh, as we just wind up uh, here today, uh, Robert, uh, what what are some of the the closing remarks you know that you can just uh, you know uh, as you wrap up to just give out there uh, to somebody who is watching or people that are going to watch this after we put it on YouTube, you know, us as Africans, what are some of your closing remarks? you know, concerning our continent? 
Um, thank you very much, um, Ken. Uh, first of all, um, we, we kind of moved away from water and water supply and all that. So we need to, I need to hone in on that a bit and say, you know, this continent has enough water, you know, um, that is treatable, you know, so that each and every resident of this continent should have access to decent water. Mm. And it's a crime in, in 2021 you know, for us not to be able to be achieving that or focusing on that. I mean, if you if you have decent, clean, potable water, you're done. I mean, you're, you're dealing with diseases, you're dealing with poverty, you're dealing with um, um, social stigma, you're dealing with so many things just by providing water to a person. They, especially, you know, th these models of, you know, wells and people yes. having to distances to get water. You know, our colleagues and our friends ended those models a long, long time ago. I mean, and we can do it in Africa. We, we should be able to, you know, apply our knowledge and, and find ways of getting water to our people, you know, and providing it at an affordable rate. The only rate we're charging really is the cost of the water. And it's so mm. very, what actually, you know, it's surprising. If you do a, a quick study, can you find that the, 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 that bottle of water you, you get at a meeting or you buy in a supermarket, you know, it costs uh, roughly the equivalent of, um, 1,000 liters of water or 25, 40 liter drums. That's the equivalent in, in any of the tariffs on this continent. The, wow. the, the rate of, the, so you will walk in a supermarket and buy water without thinking. But when, when, when the bill comes, you say, no, it's too expensive and so on. You know, because the cost of water is actually very, very affordable. So there should be no excuse. That's the point I'm trying to make to, yeah. to distribute water and get, you know, to the people. Uh, so that they have that access and get a level of decency. Secondly, in terms of um, um, the African agenda, I really think, you know, we have the, me the mental capacity, the natural resources, the physical resources required to, to develop our countries. We just need to work together uh, within ourselves and also uh, across the countries, we come up with plans, be futuristic in our thinking, you know, um, move away from deep core, hardcore politics, move into development, you know, make the develop a legacy where you, you you make a difference you know you invest properly you get our roads sorted out our hospitals sorted out our, our um, power sorted out our water sorted out communication sorted out and the livelihoods of people will rise and, will and, rise, and yeah. there you go wow. the money will start to separate and things will, will happen if we can get those things right you know africa will rise africa will be united and we can take our rightful place as the true leaders of this world, because that's what we are. You know, it's wow. just that we've been hoaxed for the past 500, 600 years yes. into believing that we are servants, that we are slaves. You know, but if you go into history, if you go into history of the people like Mansa Musa, you know, just Google that yes. guy, and he was like the richest guy that ever lived. You know, yeah. uh, only second only Solomon. You know, wow. when when he moved from West Africa to East Africa on on his his trek. He left so much gold. <laughs> I mean, I won't go into details. Just read it; you'll be surprised. And these were these were African kings. R writing came from Africa. Um, reading came from Africa. The first um, alphabet came from Africa. We built the pyramids. It was Africans. It wasn't aliens like the white people want to say these days. It was us who built yes. these things. Uh, we, 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 in Zimbabwe, the, the the great you know the great yes, Zimbabwe. The All these things were Africans. You yeah. know, we had excellent <clears throat> engineers seven hundred years ago. You know, before engineering was even a word, um, uh, the religion, the Abrahamic religions, are all from dark-skinned people. You know, yes. they, that's reality. You know, if you do your research. So, I mean, we have so much going for us. We just need to wake up and and, and take our place in society. We Those wake up. Mm. Africa needs to wake up and uh, realize that uh, we can uh, take a hold of our continent and uh, make it what we want it to be. So. I just want to, to thank the people that have left some uh, comments here, uh, Robert. Uh, these are some things that they are saying. Um, uh, Dr. Gugu Mona, she is saying interesting discussion here. That is why we need African legends like you, my leaders, to help Africa with practical solutions. And then there's a lady here called Winnie Chikava, says good points uh, there, Robert. I'm enjoying the conversation. Then Shivase is saying it is true, water is available, but lack of delivery or proper plant delivery. Then my wife Rebecca is saying great discussion. Uh, Manuku Cornelia is saying interesting. Sounds more like ESCOM. 
<laughs> es con Malawi o es con South es Africa? Es con South Africa, she's South Africa. Oh. Okay, okay. Issues we currently have in South Africa. Lack of maintenance, development of further efficient investments uh, negatively impacts the supply. And then when he says again, true, lack of foresight, uh, then and now we are suffering. Emmanuel Essien, actually this is uh, in Nigeria, he's saying absol absolutely, visionary leaders are urgently required. Uh, then uh, when he says true, let's unite with what we have. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, she says amazing. Poverty is a mindset. She's commenting to what you had said about poverty. Mm. poverty. Then uh, Rachel says, I totally agree. It's about the state of mind. And then Gugu Mona again says, absolutely visionary leaders for vibrant Africa. Then Emmanuel again says, let's rise up and do it now. Amen. So these are some of the comments that we get uh, from our, our viewers. And uh, thank you so much for coming on, Robert. Uh, in future, we will bring you again. Doesn't mean that when you are on it, it means that uh, you are on it forever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so then, I, I'd love, I mean, these are things that are dear to my heart. So, I mean, we can talk about these at length whenever you, you feel necessary. That's you right. It'd be nice to have a few more uh, panelists and then we can debate a bit. You know, we, we yes. were both in agreement. It would be nice to have somebody who doesn't really agree. Exactly. And then, you know, it's, and get better. It's, it's like you have read my mind because we are putting together a, a discussion that is going to be a panel discussion. So I will moderate the discussion with uh, a panel of uh, Africans to discuss different issues. So I think on that particular day, there's going to be some fireworks because uh, like you are saying, oh, yeah. others would agree, others would disagree. And that but is thank you nice. very much uh, for coming out, Robert. And thank you very much for everybody that was watching and uh, this is uh, African legends. And uh, now that Africans are able to write on their own, we are going to change the narrative because it has always glorified the hunter. Now the narrative will have to glorify uh, the lion because the lion can now write. So thank you so much, Robert, and uh, God bless you uh, for coming out. God bless you too, Pastor. Thank you so much. It's been a very well spent one hour. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye and greet everybody in Abuja. I'll do so. Thank you. You can greet the people in Pretoria too. I will but do let's that. go back home. Go back to Lusaka and Lilongwe and our homes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And make a difference. Yes, we okay. will. We will one day. <laughs> in, in God's Thanks, time. Thanks, man.